This promotional CD is brought to you by Young Muslims. For a complete listing of our products, please visit our online store at www.ymsite.biz. That's www.ymsite.biz. Politically 
innocuous as the Dixie Chicks, as you all know. Country and Western singers who, whose popularity is greater than any country and Western group in history. And I just found this out recently because I gave a talk at an anti-war rally sponsored by our masjid uh, at the beginning of April. And I said that I'm going to go and buy a Dixie Chicks record to support them. Because anyone that's against or has the courage to speak out against this madness, then I support them. So I went and bought the CD. It's called Fly. And on the cover, there's a little label, label over 10 million had been sold. Now here's, so here's an event 10 times platinum. An immensely popular group that makes an innocent, off-the-cuff remark about the president and how ashamed they are that the president's from Texas, where they're from, as he was preparing to enter into this invasion of Iraq. We shouldn't call it a war. War implies reciprocity. When there's a war, and to show the nature of the invasion, every war that America fought at the conclusion of the war, such as the Versailles Palace, they've sat down at a table with representatives of the opposition to sign a peace treaty or at least a a declaration of secession of hostilities. When Iraq was invaded this time, the first Gulf War, this took place. This time, there was no representatives of the Iraqi people to sign a treaty. You had American generals and commanders sitting in Saddam's palaces, lounging in the chairs, sitting at the tables, no Iraqi opposition to sign a peace treaty, to sign a ceasefire, nothing. What is this? This is a farce, brothers and sisters, a farce that we as Muslims should have no part of. A farce that we as Muslims should call for what it is. Many people get agitated and in their agitation, they get jihad fever. Oh, brothers and sisters, this isn't our fight. Our fight is higher than this. Our fight is higher than this. What proof do I have for that? The, the saying of our blessed messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam afdalu jihad kalimatu haqq inda sultan jahil that the best form of jihad is a word of truth in the face of a tyrannical ruler. That's the best jihad. So if you want jihad, you don't have to go overseas somewhere. Open up your mouth and speak the truth right here. Open up your mouth and speak the truth right here. And if we can't do that, if we can't do that, we're not worthy of going to some far off battlefield. Allah Ta'ala has put us here. And the Allah Ta'ala has blessed us to be an educated community. Not a community of illiterates. An educated community. So we have to begin to use that education to speak the truth. We have to begin to use that education as it was stated to build strong, viable institutions. Educational institutions. Media institutions. This, the strength of this country, we said this on many occasions, lies in the strength of its institutions. It doesn't matter how strong the individual Muslim is. 
if that strength of the individual is not combined with the strength of other strong Muslim individuals in an institutionalized context, that strength will inevitably go to waste. That strength will inevitably go to, to waste. If I were to ask you, is the average Muslim a stronger individual than the average non-Muslim in this society? What would you say? Who's strong? Educationally? More psychologically balanced? The average Muslim doesn't drink. Does the average non-Muslim drink? The average Muslim doesn't use drugs. Does the average non-Muslim use drugs? Some side? Marijuana, a little cocaine here and there. The average Muslim doesn't fornicate. Does the average non-Muslim fornicate? Just the average guy or girl out there. The average Muslim doesn't have uh, a, a battery of psychological imbalances. Does the average non-Muslim have? Which in but why is it that the strong Muslim individual, the strength does not translate into power in the society. Because the average non-Muslim is operating in an institutional context where the strength of the institution compensates for the weakness of the individual. And the average strong Muslim individual is acting in a weak institutional context where the weakness of the institution negates the strength of the individual. So a challenge we have is to build strong institutions. This has to be a priority. Strong educational institutions. Strong media institutions strong financial institutions, so that we don't have to put the word out. Every time there's a crisis, gather the forces, stimulate the people, raise money, so that we can very systematically finance the vital and essential work that needs to be done. And that's not to negate the importance of this and similar programs until we have those mechanisms in place. If this is the best we can do, then we have to maximize these opportunities, but we always have to look into the future and look to do better. Brothers and sisters, as it was stated, maybe people don't think that the people in Iraq need our help. Well, after all, America is committed to rebuilding Iraq. America committed to rebuilding Afghanistan after that regime change. This wasn't the first regime change. And Afghanistan today is in a mess. You may have noticed two very significant statements by Mr. Rumsfeld the last three days, yesterday and the day before. The first that the United States would not permit a religious, they said, a clerically run government in Iraq. <clears throat> that translates into a religious state in Iraq. Yesterday, that the United States forces would remain in Iraq and Afghanistan as long as it takes to set up a stable democratic system. This is an announcement of indefinite occupation. This is an announcement of indefinite occupation. This is an announcement of military occupation which is incompatible with democracy and development. So the people of Iraq if Afghanistan is any indicator of what they're in for, are going to need a tremendous amount of assistance from non-governmental sources, of which life, 
and ICNA relief and similar Islamic organizations are representative of. So brothers and sisters, your help, our help is essential for these organizations. We all have to sacrifice. We all have to work to strengthen these organizations in the vital work that they're doing. In conclusion, to give you an indication, they mentioned in the slides you saw leukemia. The United States and British military, the British military has backed up from their statement, declared that depleted uranium is harmless. No, they said depleted uranium is harmless. And so, they had the soldiers in 1991 cleaning up areas that were hit by projectiles that were tipped with depleted uranium, 300,000 300, tons of depleted, or 300 tons, I'm sorry. No, 300,000 tons of depleted uranium. 600,000 pounds of depleted uranium. Well, if depleted uranium on the tips of armor-piercing and bunker-buster projectiles, if depleted uranium is harmless, you know how they dispose of depleted uranium from power plants here? They will put it in concrete lead case drums and drop it in the bottom of the ocean. That's how they dispose of it. If it's harmless, why don't they just put it in the landfill on Staten Island? Depleted uranium has led to rates of radiation in areas around Basra from the first war, up to a hundred times higher than normal. Birth defects, no arms, no eyes, internal organs missing. No uh, cranial plates. And the same birth defects appearing amongst the children of GIs who were stationed there. The first Gulf War, they said this was the greatest imbalance of casualties in history. That's not true. Because one third of American forces were casualties suffering from Gulf War syndrome attributed primarily to depleted, exposure to depleted uranium. 200,000 American GIs. Now, the point is this, brothers and sisters, more depleted uranium, depleted uranium was used in this latest invasion than in the Gulf War of 1991. You saw the bombing of Baghdad, the so-called shock and awe. The city lit up night after night after night by these Tomahawk cruise missiles, these bunker-busting bombs, cluster bombs, ordinary munitions. There's a lot of radiation right in a city of five million people. So this is going to lead to diseases. The water, the diseases associated with lack of adequate sewage treatment, a major problem, dysentery, diarrhea, typhoid, and other diseases. The children who are dying, they need help. The orphans, the mutilated victims of cluster bombs who continue every day, their, whose number continues daily to increase because Upwards, in some areas, upwards to 25%. Of, for those of you who don't know what a cluster bomb is, it's a big, hollow bomb case filled with small, hand-sized bomblets, hundreds, that the case opens in midair and these spread out over an area as large as a football field. In some areas, up to 25% of these don't explode. Most areas, 10% don't explode. So, and they're the same color as the food packets that this government delivers. In Afghanistan, the same problem. They're the same uh, color as toys, bright yellow. 
bright yellow color. So the children go and pick these things up and they blow up killing them, blowing their arms off. They step on them, blowing their legs or feet off. So you have amputees. You have children who suffered horrific injuries, sh uh, shrapnel injuries that need care. And as you know, the hospitals were looted. And this is a, this is a war crime that we should not, we should be outraged about. Our Islamic heritage has been burned to the ground. It survived the Communist Party in Iraq. It survived the Ba'ath Party in Iraq. As soon as the United States military gets there, it's burned to the ground. But we didn't have the troops to guard it. The troops were lounging in the palaces, sleeping in the parks. And they found enough troops to guard the oil ministry. The only ministry surviving, the oil ministry. Korans, thousand years old, 1100 years old. Manuscripts, the, the, the documented history of the Abbasid Khilaf. The documentary history of the, the Ottoman Sultanate. Sumerian cuneiform writing, Sanskrit, never been translated. The heritage of humanity stolen and smashed. This is the most shocking aspect of this campaign. So brothers and sisters, it's obvious that the occupying forces don't have the interest Hospitals looted. Why were the hospitals looted? We couldn't have post a guard in front of the hospital. Why loot the hospitals? Obviously, in taking the equipment, the machinery. Well, they have to reorder. Maybe we'll give the contract to Halliburton or Bechtel. You can't leave the Iraqi people there dying. It's obvious that the occupying power doesn't have the best interest of the Iraqi people at heart. So we, brothers and sisters, must have the best interest of the Iraqi people and the Muslims everywhere at heart. Because we're all in this together. We're all in this together. And if we can't see that now, we're blind, brothers and sisters. They're not asking what kind of Muslim you are when they throw you in detention. They just want a pretext to get another Muslim off the street. They're not asking what kind of Muslim you are when they deny you an immigration visa in this or that country. Oh, you're a Shia Sunni, Sunni, Ash'ari, Salafi. Are you a Muslim? Oh, you are. Denied. We're all in this together, brothers and sisters. So we have to stand up. We have to work for our brothers and sisters. We have to sacrifice. We have to sacrifice. And if we don't, no one will. If we don't, no one will. So we pray that the spirit of sacrifice predominates this, this evening. And when the call is made to give, that we give abundantly. Because this is our religion. This is our religion. In this country, and there are a lot of good people in this country. Don't see this even, we don't see this as strictly the uh, America against the Muslims. America is made up of many different groups. There's a small group that, as was pointed out by Dr. Gossip, that vehemently want the presence of Islam stamped out in this country. And not necessarily because they have anything against Islam, necessarily, but because it threatens their interests. If it were the Hindus, they'd be against the Hindus with the same fervor. But there are many groups who are supportive of the Muslims. There are many groups who want to hear the Muslim side of the story. And when we finally get a spokesperson or 
articulate enough to articulate that story, they'll say, where have you been? Why haven't we heard from you before now? Why have you been silent for so long? So there are a lot of good people, brothers and sisters. There are a lot of good people that we should be reaching out to. And we should be building bridges with. And we should be joining hands with. To advance the cause of good and decency, not only in this country, but throughout the world. And as Muslims, I'd add one thing to what Dr. Ghazi said about building strong schools and building strong media. But as a prerequisite to all of that, we have to build strong Muslims. We have to build strong Muslims. Each and every Muslim individual has to be strong because we're under an onslaught. You might not realize it, but the pressure that's being put on our community, on Muslim individuals, is tremendous. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. To survive, we have to be spiritually strong. Go to your Quran. Go make sure that you're, you're reading your awrad and reading your adhkar, no matter where you get them from or what their source is. Make sure that you're arming yourself and strengthening your heart and strengthening your spirit and trying to draw yourself closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we are under tremendous pressure. Our young people, you should dedicate your lives to this. If Allah Ta'ala wanted you to be a Kafir, He would have made you a Kafir. It's that simple. Don't chase after these Kafirs. If Allah wanted you to be a Kafir, He would have made you a Kafir. And that would have been the end of it. But through His wisdom, He chose to put you in a Muslim family. And He chose to make your parents committed to trying to teach you Islam. And inculcate into you Islamic values. That's for wisdom. And realize that if you hold on, you have a great honor. You have a great station before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A great station. Sab'akum ya Allah fi dhillihi yawma la dhilla illa dhillu. There are seven groups Allah will shade in the shade of His throne on a day there will be no shade except that shade. And we say the shade of this throne, another version of the hadith, يَفْرِلْهُمُ اللَّهُ First one, the most important, Imamun Adi, a just leader. The second, the second most important, because the just leader needs soldiers, and not soldiers that will physically fight, but soldiers who will provide support and to provide those willing sacrifices for the cause. Shad nasha'a fi ibadatillah. A young person who grows up worshiping Allah. A young person who dedicates his or her life to Allah. Those are the soldiers. Always, they always have been and they always will be. So you should dedicate your life to the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not missing anything. You're not missing anything from this world. I, I wasn't always a Muslim, I tell you. Take my word for it. You're not missing anything from this world. Every pleasure that you think the non-Muslims are enjoying, that pleasure will sooner or later become torment from them. What do you want? The women? If you're a young man or the guys, if you're a girl? There are a million young girls out there who wanted the guys. And the guys wanted them until they got pregnant. And now they're wretched. They have two or three babies, 22, 21 years old. Shot. Their life is finished. They're in crack houses, alcoholics, or just wretched. The drugs, the drugs were exciting until it became a habit. Then it became torment. 
So the one that was partying and chasing the drugs ends up in an alley somewhere, begging, stealing to support their habit, robbing people, selling their children's food stamps or money for food. It becomes torment. What is that, that that's being missed? There's nothing that's being missed, brothers and sisters. Don't even waste your time. Give your life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give your life to Islam. Give your life to Islam and the ultimate reward. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at dunya sijnun mu'min wa jannatun kafir. This world is a prison for the believer and is paradise for the kafir. It's a prison for the believer because our just as a prisoner is restrained from pursuing his desires by the physical prison, the Sharia, the bars of the Sharia restrain us from pursuing our wishes. We might want this. I want this woman. Oh, she's haram for me. I can't fornicate. That's haram. That's a punishable offense. I want to drink this. Oh, it has alcohol in it. I have to wait. I want to eat this. Wait. Oh, that's that's an ingredient from from the pig. I can't eat that. The Sharia restrains us. But what is the inconvenience if we want to call it that that the Sharia gives to us compared to the torment of the Catholic in the hellfire? And what is the enjoyment of the Kafir in his Jannah? What Jannah to Kafir? So he fornicates, or he drinks alcohol, or smokes marijuana, or eats whatever he wants, has the, uh, the bacon burger special at Burger King. But what is the enjoyment in all that is we said that eventually becomes a torment you heard about the fat people trying to sue Burger King. The Burger King made me fat. <laughs> what is, so what is that temporal enjoyment compared to the enjoyment of the believer in our Jannah? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, dedicate your life to Islam. Work hard for Islam. And don't worry about what you miss because what you miss is nothing. And what's waiting for us because of our sacrifices for this deen is unimaginable. Wa jazakumullah khayyam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Products such as this are designed to help our youth attain a proper understanding of Islam. All proceeds will go to Young Muslims, a pioneering national organization which is facilitating the youth in becoming the future. Please visit our website at www.ymsite.com. That's www.ymsite.com to learn more about our organization and its activities. For a complete listing of our products, please visit our online store at www.ymsite.biz. That's www.ymsite.biz. All rights reserved for Young Muslims Incorporated. No part of this series can be reproduced without expressed written consent. Unlawful reproduction will